Having attitude, skills, and plan means that you can choose to comply or choose to defend yourself. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Tucson, Arizona in the United States. So these these new bolts this weekend, they held up really well. You can see even where we hit it, no worries detected. They took all the hits that we that we hit at them. This is, this is a winner, man. Yes, they are a sponsor of active self-protection. This stuff is a winner for class. I'm gonna start using these in a lot more classes. If you go read the news stories linked in the description, the perp here is wanted on a huge string of armed robberies in Tucson. We have some sound with this one, so let's listen in. About a month later, they caught this perp with all of the felony charges. This dude is gonna get buried under the jail. That's where this one ends. Oh man, I gotta admit, videos like this just make my blood boil when I see good people hurt like this. Question for you, what martial art or empty-handed skills do you practice? Are you training with your hands to defend yourself? Hit your answer down below. I have a 13-year earned second-degree black belt in a derivative of Kempo Nonezumas, and I've been studying jiu-jitsu for the last nine, 10 months, give or take, just to broaden my art a little bit. What do you study? Let me know, and let's interact in positive and helpful ways. And let's think about some other lessons from this one. Some interesting stuff out of this one we wanna pay attention to. First of all, for this delivery driver, paying attention to your world. I totally get it. He's delivering pizzas. It's a low-end job. It looks like it's later at night. So, you know, he's he's focused on his task, whatever. But particularly in transitional spaces and doorways to the public and inside, especially that back door, actually, that's a little more isolated, is a transitional space. You wouldn't expect to see anybody back there. So paying attention to your world might have given this guy a little bit more information, even when he's pulling up with his car. Pay attention to your world. You will have better opportunity to defend yourself. So we see the fact that he doesn't close the door promptly, so that brings our armed robber in. They always get the element of surprise in the armed robbery. That's why they choose to launch their attack. They feel like they have significant advantage. Notice this guy has advantage in force because he's got a gun in his hand. He has advantage in surprise because nobody knows that he's there. So as a self-defender, you have to recognize that you've got to flip that switch as fast as you can from an everyday mode to a defense mode. And having the ability to understand and really turn that dimmer switch up quickly is an important part of active self-protection. Now then, he threatens a the guy with a gun, starts saying, hey, man, bring me the stuff. Guy is really compliant here, right? So there was a little bit of forward here. That's just how Tucson PD did it. So he pulls this guy over and just starts beating the tar out of him, right? And he hits him right in the face. Now, a couple things about this. Number one, compliance does not necessarily mean that you will not be hurt. Compliance can be a good tool and compliance can be the right answer, but it doesn't mean at all that you will necessarily be safe. And we see that here pretty significantly. This guy was not giving him any hard time whatsoever. And yet our arm robber still beat the crap out of him. Don't expect compliance to be a foolproof solution. Secondly here, the guy is punching him in the face and he has a hold of him with the other hand, which means he doesn't have a gun in his hand, which means he's put that gun away. So if you were an astute and aware self-defender, you might've said, aha, he put that gun away. And yes, we're still in a weaponized environment, but now's the time for my empty handed skills. Now's the time for my grappling skills. Now's the time to get after this guy and get myself out of the danger zone. Now this guy doesn't have those skills, so he's not gonna be able to do that. He's just gonna sit there and put his hands up and hope for the best and try to talk some sense into an armed robber, which isn't necessarily your best bet. Now you notice here, I do think that the guy puts his hands up in a, if a shield over his face. That's a very natural reaction, but notice how ineffective it was. The guy's got a hold of him with a leveraging arm and he's holding him there to punish him in order to get what he wants. So having an, an empty handed skill set that at the very least says, I'm going to get a hold of this guy and we are going to grapple up because I do not want him to keep punching me in the face is an important part of your skill set. And the only way you're gonna build that is honestly not by watching YouTube videos. You can watch this video and see, aha, this is what I need to do. But the way to get that is going to the mat, is going to training, is getting on the mats and getting good training with reputable folks, doing some pressure testing so that you know what you can do in the moment. So big lessons out of this one, paying attention, understanding the limitations of compliance, staying emotionally fit and present so that if you get punched in the face, you go, aha, his hands are empty. We can do something about that. Having the empty handed skills to do so to cover your ass. 